Welcome back, uh, Chalk Talk with Coach Flo. Um, back here today representing the Kane Cougars and Coach Garrett uh, from Kane University. Um, good to have you back. Good to be back with you. Uh, today's today's uh, title, we're, we're taking a step back. We've, we've done some offense. We've done some special teams. We did do something on leadership a few weeks ago. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the all big, so you want to be a head football coach. So, um, but once again, before we start, just want to thank you for jumping on. I um, hope everyone's being healthy and safe and staying in and doing what they got to do, doing their part. Um, obviously, uh, this is a week, weekly series. Um, I also want to make mention that on April 15th, I'll be doing a, um, a live telecast uh, on a Zoom uh, with uh, a good friend of mine, Greg Cooper, and his group. Uh, we'll be talking some football. There'll be a live uh, live session where I'll talk for about 45 minutes, and then you'll get to be, be able to ask some questions. I'll share that on Facebook for you. Now, we're up to 23 subscribers for this channel, which is huge. We started what nine weeks ago, eight weeks ago. Uh, we're gonna start. I'm gonna start giving away some giveaways uh, as I start to go back and look and see who's subscribed. We want you to subscribe to the channel. Uh, we want you to like and then obviously hit the bell for future videos once a week doing different topics. Um, I appreciate you jumping on once again. My name is uh, Jerry Flora um, uh, and uh, with the help of my son Frankie doing all the legwork here. Um, I appreciate you hopping on. We're going to dive right into it. Uh, topic that's near and dear to my heart. Well, one of my goals always as it is for a goal for everyone is you want to be in charge in some capacity you want to be a leader um, uh, you may want to be a head football coach whatever the case is you can pretty much fit, factor this in if you take out the head football coach so you want to be a whatever it is you want to be a CEO you want to be a phys ed teacher you want to be a head football coach you want to be whatever uh, I'm going to go through a couple of different things ten things to do after you get a head coaching job. So not in any particular order. Um, I would say probably in the first uh, two months. Obviously, depending on your situation, if you're a Division I school, you know, maybe a little bit faster because of signing date. If you're Division Three, it may be a little bit different because you don't have a signing date. It also, it also could change based on when you get hired. Uh, as a football coach, you could get hired uh, during the summer. You, it may change because at that point you're just trying to get philosophy in, you're trying to evaluate talent, um, and you're going to hit the ground running. You get hired in wintertime, they have more of an off-season program to develop. You can develop the total player. And then if you get hired in the summer or later in the school year, you know now you've lost that development process, you're just working on the summertime. Then I'm just going to talk to you about 10 traits that I think that could be a great head football coach, and that's pretty much for anything that you do in life. Uh, like for me personally, I'm fortunate enough to coach for 28 years. I was a head football coach for 10. Um, I've been in a leadership role where I've led uh, people, whether it's a group of at least 75, for about 12 and a half years. So um, I have a pretty good understanding. I'm not going to say I'm perfect because no one's perfect. And I'm constantly always reevaluating. Even when I did this speech today, I went back and I did a little bit of research Always trying to research stuff. Never feel like you know too much. Okay, so first let me just dive right into the first piece. So you want to be a head coach. You want to be in charge. What are some of the things you got to do? And it's really not in any specific order. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, you want to do some things different than others. First thing you want to do, number one, Is have a plan. You want to have a plan. You want to have a detailed plan as to what you're trying to do. Um, you want to have that plan. Uh, and it may involve recruiting. It may involve uh, philosophy. It may involve alumni. It may involve fundraising. It may involve uh, community service. Maybe your philosophy. You need to have a plan because ultimately you need to be able to tell the plan, obviously, the because you've already interviewed for the job and got the job, and you told the, the committee what your plan was. So now you need to be able to tell all the other constituents your plan, your coaches, your players, your administration, your support staff, and they need to follow in line with the plan. 
The second thing you want to do is recruit. Because as a coach, you're not going to be as successful if you can't recruit. So you maybe already, you've already done some research, you know, you were looking for the job for six months, and now you're, you're, you got the job, your first day on the job, you're thinking, okay, we got needs at this position, we got needs on this side of the ball, these are the players we got coming back, these are the players we need. Now, obviously, certain situations are different. High school, you may not be able to recruit. In high school, you may have to go down to the Pop Warner and you start developing some sort of a culture from the Pop Warner program. So that they stay in house and they don't start to go elsewhere to private schools or whatnot. Division three, you start recruiting. Division two, division one, you have signing dates. There's certain times when you can recruit and you can't. So yeah, that's recruiting is first and foremost. Um, it's after you develop a plan, you're going to hit the round, the ground running. Number three, you want is staff. Develop. You got to put together a staff. You, you, you already probably know four or five people you're bringing with you. You got to look at student workers. You got to see what your budget is. Um, you know, you may and may you may have two full time guys. You know, your budget may only allow one. At William Patterson, it was one until um, Coach Miello got hired in 2004, um, and then I ended up becoming the second one. So it was me and Coach Stinson, uh, and they've always had two. You know, uh, different places came as Coach Garrett and, and, and two other guys. Um, so it depends. Some schools have more full-time guys, less part-time guys. Some guys go. Some schools go more part-time, less full-time. Some have a ton of GAs. So you guys see where your budget is and see how your staff's going to fall in. Your fourth thing is you want to meet with everyone with, with, with all in the program, we'll, we'll say. So you get hired, all right? Now there may be coaches that are still there. Um, you know, perfect example is Coach Johnson got hired at, uh, at William Patterson after I had uh, stepped down and took the job in rec services. You know, Coach Lasardi and Coach Williams were already part of the staff. They're already there. So he's got to meet with them to determine what the philosophy is going to be, what their roles are going to be, stuff like that. There may be guys that maybe go that aren't going to be around. There may be positions that open. There may be part-time positions open. There may be part-time coaches still there. Um, you know, he may need to. You may need to meet with, with student workers, grad assistants, um, and then ultimately you want to meet with the players. You know, whether it's you give each player maybe 15 minutes to talk about, you know, what their feelings are, what they're looking for in a program. Obviously, you take what they have to say. You're not going to run a program based on what they want, but you want to see where they fall in line. Do they fall in line similar to where you fall in line? Okay, so that's number four. <coughs> Excuse me. Number five, uh, we did that. Alumni. Sorry. Alumni and donors. Now you start to reach out to the alums. When I got the job at William Patterson in 2008, first thing I did was I reached out to Coach Brown, who was on our coaching staff. We put together a small alumni group. We reached out to seven or eight guys, and at one point we got it to about 15 or 16 guys. And we had monthly meetings, and we would talk about stuff that we wanted to do as a group and then the program, and, and when we'd have a monthly, we'd have pizza, and some nights we'd go bowling, and some nights we'd... We go golf. Someday we go golfing. It was always we were trying to do some different stuff, and then you want to try and focus on donors. You know, if you're in a college program, even in a high school program, you know, you may want to, you know, maybe get bring bridge the old with the new. So you want to get some donors to donate to your program. Uh, next is you want to meet with 
all these areas. You have a lot of meeting to do in the first month or so. You want to make sure everyone's on the same page. You want to, if you're in college, you want to meet with the director of financial aid. You want to meet with the director of admissions. You want to meet with the director of student services that deals with payment and how the payment process works. So when bills have to be paid, so you're not scrambling for players. You want the director of housing. You know, what are the goals there? You want to talk to the director of facilities. Maybe in high school, it's the director of maintenance. You want to talk about fields and how they're going to line the fields and how you want the fields cut and if it's grass, if it's turf, those types of things. You want to talk to guidance if you're in high school. You know, in college, you're talking to advisement. There's all different areas you got to talk to. You need to talk to every head, and you need. it goes back to number one. You're talking about your plan. And then you want to try and fit your plan into the way the university rolls. Because guidance may do stuff different than the way financial aid does, than the way admissions does, than the way maintenance does. So everyone's on the same page. Number seven is, let's see what time we got, Frank. Seven is you want to dress the team. 11 minutes. Okay. And you want to have that team meeting. Uh, you want to obviously, you, the goal would be to meet with the players and the coaches before you have the team meeting. So you, you, you've met with everybody. You've met with all the areas I just mentioned. You met with the coaches. Um, maybe even you had your staff hired. Maybe not. Maybe you had half your staff hired. And then you had everything together. You see how that fit in line with what your goals were. And then you had a team meeting to explain to the team what direction we were going. This is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen this week. This is our strength and addition program. This is how we do study hall. This is how we do spring ball. Everything. And you have your team meeting. Number eight is strength and conditioning. You know, some schools, at William Patterson, I was the strength coach. When I got hired in 02 and I was working with Coach Rico, even though I was full-time, I was also the strength coach. A lot of people didn't realize that Coach Rico was the head coach at the time he was doing the offense, and we had a guy on staff, uh, Larry Subbo, who was doing the defense, and I was the special teams coordinator, the recruiting coordinator, the strength and conditioning coach, dealing with alumni relations. You got a lot of different hats. You got to be able to figure out where you, where you, once again, you got to have a plan. Okay? So, you know, if you're the strength and conditioning coach and that's all you do, easy, done. You know, we've had some good ones in the recent years. Most recently, Kyle McGuff, who was a student, did a great job. Samino helped them. Seibel helped them. They did a fantastic job. Coach Lasardi was in our weight room at, at, um, Obviously, at, uh, at at William Patterson, Coach Graff at, at Kane the, did a great. You gotta have a plan, but if you're coaching a position and you're strength and conditioning, it makes it a little bit difficult. So you gotta be detail oriented. And then nine and ten uh, and then nine. And 10 is, this is philosophy. And this is, this is OD special teams and then other. And I'll explain to it other as a second. So nine, you're going to have a philosophy. You have an OC, you have a DC. Are you going to be a spread? Are you going to be a run and shoot? Are you going to run triple option from gun? Are you going to run triple from under center? On defense, you're going to run a pro 3-4. You're going to be a 4-3. You're going to be a 4-4. Four, four. You're going to run an eagle. Special teams, how are you going to be? Are you going to use a lot of motion stuff? Are you going to be standard? Are you going to do the, the rugby punt? These are all things you, that everyone on the team needs to know. And based, once again, based on when you get hired. You get hired in the winter, you have the whole offseason to put this in. You get hired before the season starts, you got a week to put this in. So it also depends on how much time you got. And then other is the other philosophy. You know, what are your other goals that you're looking to do? Like we had some rules in our program at William Patterson when I first started. No hats in buildings. 
So if you're going into an academic building, you had to take your hat off. We didn't want anyone with the hats backwards, sideways, you just took it off. We told our players sit in the first three rows of class. Because the, the theory there is, from a professor's standpoint, if there's there, if it's broken up into the front, the middle, and the back. Typically, the players that sit in the front are the ones that are interested. Teachers are willing to give you a little bit more slack. If you sit in the back, they're not interested. They're not going to give you any slack. The goal was the people in the middle. We want to try and get as many people in the middle closer to the front of the classroom. So stuff like that. You know, be courteous in the classrooms. Be courteous to the professors. Try and keep the profanity down. You know, always hold the door open for someone. Be respectful. Be nice. Those types of things. You know, when you're in the cafeteria, put your food away. Put your tray away. Don't let someone else do it. You're not at home. This is somewhere else. You want to try and be respectful. So these are the things that you drill in terms of what the other is. Academic, what, what's our academic philosophy? What are our academic goals? So these are the 10 things you want to try and focus in on, in my mind, when you become a head coach. And reality is, if you do anything, you can put those 10 things in somewhere, you just change. Maybe it's not OD strong, strength and conditioning philosophy. Maybe if you want to be an aquatics director, it's your philosophy in aquatics. But a lot of the rules down here are going to be the same for everyone. Like don't be late. Be on time. You know, um, you know, everyone wears the same socks on game day. Shirts are tucked in. You know, little rules that go down here. All right? And then, you know, traits. Call them traits. Call them norms. Call them whatever you want. Number one, never stop improving. So you want to be a good coach, but I don't care what sport, you want to be a leader, forget about it, I don't even care if it's a coach. Never stop improving. Never, never, never stop improving. Um, always try and do the best you can be. Um, never settle for, for just, you want to be blah, like, you know, you may do something one year and you may change it the next year. You may look at how you did. Like what we used to do, what I used to do is when the season end, I used to meet with all the players, give them 15 minutes to talk about, you know, the season, met with all the coaches, took all that information, compiled it, took a look at it, see where the similarities were, see if it was similar to some of the problems I had and make those changes. That's what you do. I don't care what you're doing. The second thing is you want to be yourself. I don't care what you're doing, okay? I don't care what you're doing, and, and, and you have to adjust to talent. So you want to be yourself and adjust to talent. So I was always, you know, I mean, I, I yelled and I screamed, but I, I got my point across. I didn't yell as much. I didn't like to use curse words. I got my point across. My players knew where I was coming from, when I wanted to come, when I wanted to... If I wanted to get angry, they knew. If I wanted to be a little bit more laid back, I'd be a little bit more laid back. Back. All right? And then you want to adjust to your talent. You know, you may, you may have uh, the talent to run under center and run a power eye football. You may not you may have the talent to run a, a West Coast offense. You may have the talent to run a ride the side offense. You may have the talent to run a triple option. Uh, defensively, you may have more down linemen. Now you want to run a 5-2 or a 4-4. You may have more linebackers. You want to run a 3-3, three, 3-5, three, three, 3-4. Three, so it's all based on adjusting. Um, third thing you want to do is be a master of your scheme. So whatever you decide to do, you want to be a master of it. So if you decide you're going to run the run and shoot, then you better make sure you know pass protections, you better know where the running backs go, where the quarterback's drops are, where the inside receivers run, where the outside receivers run. You better know down and distance. You better know yard markers. You better know field position. You better, you better be able to adjust on the run. You better be able to figure out what you're doing on backed up, what you're doing coming out, what you're doing on the two, what you're doing on the 50, what you're doing in the blue zone. These are all things you got to figure out. You just can't wake up one day and say, hmm. I want to run power eye football. Okay, great, but we don't have a fullback to do that. So you need to master what you're doing so that the players are confident in what the goal is.
You want to get the most out of your coaches. And that could be staff. You want to get the most out of them. You don't want to burn them out, but you want to get the most out of them. So, you know, you're going to have a plan. You know, what we used to do at William Patterson is we'd have practice. We, we, everyone would go shower, clean up, whatever. We'd come in. We'd have a meeting. We'd all meet. We'd talk about the practice we had. We'd talk about the practice for the next day. What do we need the next day? Do we need an end zone camera? Do we need special teams film? Do we need one-on-one -on -one film? What needs to be filmed? And anyone would express their concerns. We would talk about stuff that may be coming up for the week. And within an hour, that meeting would be done. Then we would sit and we would talk with the offense for about 15 minutes. Talk about questions, concerns, issues, whatever the case is. And then we'd let them go. Because a lot of the part-time guys had full-time jobs. So those guys were gone by 8.15. So they can go home and sleep or do whatever they need to do. They want to make some recruiting calls. They want to sit at their desk and go through the email. And then after that... The real meat and, meat and potatoes went to work for the full-time guys. And the full-time guys went to work at 8.15, and that went to whenever. So you want to try and get the most out of your guys in any way, shape, or form. You want to be fair. Got a time check, Bob. And consistent. 21 minutes. Okay, fine. You want to be fair and consistent. Sorry for the, for the writing. You want to be fair. So what you decide is, is, is right today needs to be the same thing tomorrow. You don't want to set a precedence for a starter and the backup. You don't want to punish the number 100, 100 player on the team, but the number one player on the team you don't do anything to. You, everyone needs to make sure that they're on the same page. And, you know, so it's like for, for me, honestly, I, mean, I think back to my second to last year, I had a situation with a star player, which – you know, realistically, needed to be needed to be disciplined. And earlier in the season, we had a uh, like a third string player that was disciplined. And I sat in that room. It was later in the season, and we we really needed to win. And winning was really important based on our record, based on our team, based on injuries. And I sat there with my coaches, and my coaches outvoted me, saying that this guy needed to play. You know, he was he was a guy that needed to play, and we 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 couldn't sit him. But I had to do what was right based on being fair and consistent. So I had sit him the first half of the game. He played the second half of the game. Fortunate enough for us, we won. But it's not the point. The point is everyone knows what your philosophy is. Um, and then you want to be a role model. I don't care what you do. I don't care if you're the CEO of a company. I don't care if you're the president of a corporation. I don't care if you're the principal of a school. I don't care if you're a director of athletics. You want to be a role model to your kids, your, your players, your staff, your coaches, your support staff. When they look at that program, when they look at whatever that piece of that thing is, they see you, they see the face of that program. So when you look at Pepsi and you see who's in charge of Pepsi and you see that person, that's the face of the program. You look at Disney, you see at Mr. Disney, you see that's the face of Disney. Well, when you look at the program at Kane University, you look at Dan Garrett, who's a class act and is as good as they come. Having worked with him for, for eight months, a year, whatever it was, and being a good friend of his for a number of years, he's the face of that program. And then everyone else falls in line. And so on and so on and so on. So... It's really important that all those other things that I mentioned come in line with this piece. Because at the end of the day, your number one goal, besides trying to win a championship and graduate your players, is you want your players to go off in the real world and, 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 and pretty much embody what you are. And for me, honestly, that's the, probably the greatest feeling now. As I look at players that I've had, uh, we've had a, we had 125 seniors in 10 years at William Patterson. Uh, almost 90% of them, I think 92% of them, have graduated and gotten their degrees, and a lot of them are doing really well. And it doesn't matter whether it's a head football coach, whether it's a nurse, whether it's a police officer, whether it's working in the district attorney's office, whether it's working in the border patrol. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They're all embody something of you. And I've had a lot of players come back to me and say, Coach. 
man, you taught me so much, and now I'm teaching my kids that. And that's what it's all about. Uh, my cousin Art, perfect example, my cousin Art Sonato coaches baseball down in Texas. And he just posted a video this morning that was moving. And, you know, with all the social distancing, you know, they posted, it posted a video of his pliers, you know, drove, I guess, to his cul-de-sac, and they drove and they were honking the horn to say, hi, coach, we miss you. That's what it's all about. I mean, yeah, there's greater things in life, whether it's the birth of your kids or your kids getting married or your, your, your personal kids, you know, get graduating from college or you getting married or stuff like that. But when you deal with other people's kids, which is what coaches do and administrators do, that's, what, that's the culminating piece. So if you're an AD, you want your coaches to be successful. Because your coaches are then, that success is going to embody their players, which is going to embody the district. You know, one of my goals for years was, yeah, we had turnover after probably four year four, year five at William Patterson, but it wasn't like we had turnover because guys were getting out of coaching. We had turnover because guys were leaving to get head coaching jobs. Guys were leaving to get Division I jobs. Guys were leaving to get Division II jobs. Guys were leaving to go to the NFL. They were looking to go up. And at the end of the day, if you can do that as a leader, then everything I just mentioned is a okay. So with that said, I hope you got something out of today. Um, I know it's a little bit long, about 22 minutes or so. Uh, but like I said, it doesn't matter whether you want to be a head football coach, you want to be a CEO, you want to be a bus driver. Whatever you decide you want to do, you make that the best you can do day in and day out. And you make sure that when someone thinks back 20 years later, 10 years later, when they think of that, they think of you, and they think of everything that goes around with it. So with that said, Chalk Talk with Coach Flo, once again, Head Coach's Corner. Thank you to my son, Francis Michael Flora. But we will see you next week. We'll be back. God bless.